Alright guys, this is the first Blood B67 from Epo Maker. It's a 65% keyboard with a full clear acrylic case for the ultimate RGB transparency flare. So just looking at this keyboard, it's got quite a peculiar design which might also be its selling point. And I just wanted to take some time to do a full uncut shot so you guys know exactly what this keyboard looks like rather than the whole cinematic aesthetic because that's not very realistic. Now when we take a closer look, you can see that this is a high profile case, and it's got a bunch of edges. From the rising top corners, to the beveled bottom edge, a sharp overhang, and then finished with a rounded bottom piece. It even has these thick rubber feet for a higher typing angle, and it's definitely unlike any other keyboard I've reviewed so far, and that's great. And there's four versions to choose from, obsidian black, crystal clear, peach pink, and pearl white. Now moving to the back of the keyboard, we get a transparent switch for the tri-connectivity of Bluetooth, wired via USB-C and 2.4G. And the 2.4G receiver just so happens to be stored inside the keyboard right beside it, which is pretty convenient. And surprisingly, the receiver only stays put at a certain orientation, so just make sure that you put it in right before moving the keyboard around or else it's gonna just fall right out and you don't want that to happen. So this keyboard is advertised as a gasket mount keyboard and I'd say it's a 98% accurate description. Because right off the bat, when you press down on the keyboard, there is visible flex which is great, but you can also see how they cut corners for this to work. So this silicone layer in between the plates and the PCB is what does most of the work here. It has these protrusions that rest on the bottom housing so that the PCB never touches the housing. And with the top housing, it has these three nibs that hold the plate in place instead of using foam. So not only does the plate foam act as a dampener, it also isolates the keyboard from touching the housing and gives it a bit of flex because of the way the plate is cut, which is pretty insane. And that last two missing percents would be the fact that there's no silicone or foam to isolate the plate from touching the top housing, but that's just a technicality at this point. So next we have the translucent keycaps and these are pretty sweet. They're MDA profile keycaps made out of ABS plastic with a surface printed font. Which means it's going to rub off over a long period of time. Which I think is actually fine with this particular keyboard because when you turn it on, the RGB is so bright that you can barely see the lettering anyways. And another interesting detail is that the arrow keys don't actually match the row height, but using them feels comfortable because they slope down for a more natural stance. And you also get a blank key on the top right corner too. Now underneath these keycaps, we have the Kale Jellyfish switches that have a clear stem and housing which is perfect for RGB keyboards like this one. It's a linear switch with a 50 gram actuation and 65 gram bottom out. And when we open it up, you can see it's got a pretty long spring and it's also slightly factory lubed. They're decently smooth but still scratchier than your pre-lubed Everglide Aqua Kings. You are also pairing these switches with some subpar plate mount stabilizers that have a little bit of lube in them but I would definitely suggest re-lubing them to get that clean sound. And here's the stock sound test. And of course this keyboard is built using a hot swappable south facing PCB which means you can use your cherry profile keycaps without any interference. And not only does this PCB have surface mounted LEDs on the top, it also has them on the bottom too which gives you even more brightness during nighttime gaming with that underglow and it's just a beautiful sight to see. So if you love RGB, you should definitely get this keyboard here. As mentioned before, this keyboard has tri-connectivity, so pressing function and Q, W, and E will let you connect to three Bluetooth devices simultaneously, while function and R will let you use the 2.4G receiver, which is probably more stable for wireless gaming. And the 3600 mAh battery can be found at the bottom of the keyboard where the silicone pad is, and it's pretty decent and should last you around a week and a half to two weeks depending on how much you use the keyboard and whether or not you use RGB. There are a couple of onboard controls to change lighting effects and volume as usual, and of course the crutch is not being able to use QMK or VIA. Now let's talk about the issues. This keyboard is all fun in games up until the point you want to start lubing the switches. I'm pretty sure this is a general issue regarding transparent and translucent keycaps, where the stem is just too tight when it attaches to the switch. With just the keycap holder, a lot of the switches end up coming up along with the keycaps, and a few of them took a bit of effort to separate. 
It's technically a small issue, but it just adds to the time required to mod the keyboard, especially if you can't separate the switch and the keycap at all. And the second issue is what really matters, the price. This keyboard is not cheap at all. It's 180 US dollars, which is pretty insane, but it also kind of makes sense. For the same price, you could get a Keychron keyboard, which in my opinion is one of the best keyboards out there. And if we were to just look at the specs, wireless capabilities, hot swap ability, and a gasket mount is not worth the $180 price tag, since you can get all of that in a budget keyboard. In my opinion, the premium price is for the well-made transparent acrylic housing and the proprietary double-sided RGB PCB, and that's it. Maybe the keycaps as well, but one thing's for sure is that this keyboard is for a specific buyer in the community. Overall, this keyboard is unique in style with its transparent acrylic housing and it's very well made and is definitely one of the nicer keyboards that I've seen so far. You've got your wireless capabilities of Bluetooth and 2.4G, you've got compatibility for both Mac and Windows OS, and the only downer is the hefty price tag where you could get a Keychron Q3 for the same price. I don't think the price is worth it, but let me know what you guys think about it. Links are going to be in the description down below as always. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.